everybody. Welcome back to Elementary Read Aloud. I'm Miss Amanda with the Bexley Public Library. And as you may have already discovered this month, we're talking about the Caldecott Award. Now, the selection committee for the Caldecott Award will be meeting in late January. And so leading up to that, we're going to be reading some of our favorite books from this past year that we think have a chance of winning the Caldecott. And so remember, the Caldecott Award is awarded to the best picture book the best illustrated picture book especially of the past year. So we're looking at books that were published in 2020. All right, now the book that we're going to be reading today is pretty near and dear to my heart. It's a new one called Big Truck Little Island by Chris Van Dusen. Now you may be wondering, Miss Amanda, why is this book near and dear to your heart? Well, you see, my father was a truck driver. And uh, so getting to read through and see this truck driver as he tries to get to the end of his route, which we'll see that at the end of the book, uh, is, you know, reminds me a little bit of my father. So let's get started. Big Truck, Little Island by Chris Van Dusen. And so we see here on the end paper, we've got the ocean and what appears to be a boat. I wonder what that has to do with the truck. Big truck, little island. Ooh, and we can actually see the big truck on this page too. Out on the ocean, one bright summer day, bound for an island still five miles away. A tugboat was towing a truck on a barge, a truck that was hauling a load extra large. Yeah, the truck and the load on the back both look really big. They're almost bigger than the tugboat. The cargo it carried was all under wraps, tied to the trailer with buckles and straps, facing a twisty and treacherous ride to get to the field on the far eastern side. So we're starting down here in the harbor, and we're trying to get up here, and wow, this path is super twisty. Goes up this huge hill, goes in and out of trees, all the way up to this little field at the eastern side of the island. That's gonna be hard. The barge reached the ramp, the truck trundled off. It bucked up the bridge with a wheeze and a cough. Then slowly, surely, it chugged up the road, lugging its 20-ton oversized load. Whoa, whatever this thing is, it's huge. It's almost bigger than some of these houses here. And 20 tons is super heavy. Oh, we finally have the truck driver. There he is. One narrow roadway transected, that means cut it in half, the aisle, and the driver had driven it less than a mile when he came to a switchback. That's where the road kind of wraps around itself really tight, terribly tight, then felt the whole payload shift off to his right. Oh no, you can even see in the illustration here, the load is leaning off of the truck. It's gonna fall off. And I can definitely say truck drivers don't want their, uh, the load on the back of the truck to fall off of the truck. The trailer was tipping, everything slipping. The wheels in the way back were no longer gripping. Ooh. They skidded and slid off the road and then, oh my goodness, the whole truck's going off the side of the road. Thud. They landed and lodged in the soft, sticky mud. Whoops, our payload in the back has made the back of the truck go off the edge of the road and now the back wheel is stuck in the mud. And now we know that the load on the back of the truck is super heavy, it's like 20 tons. And so if it's gonna get stuck in the mud, it's really gonna get stuck in the mud. Two cars in a hurry arrived from the north. Then from the south came a third and a fourth. They waited and wished that the traffic was flowing. They had things to do, and they had to get going. And this poor truck driver is now stuck, lodged in the middle of the road, and there are cars on either side of him. I wonder how he's going to get out of this. Meg had a swim meet at three at the pool. She swam the fly, that's a kind of swimming stroke, for her team at the school. And Barry was late for ballet. He needed to practice his batement frappe. 
Oh, check it out. He seems like a really good ballet person. Ballerina. Ballerino. Pete had a project to finish with Paul, a working volcano with lava and all. And Sue had to be at the dog wash with Bunk, her sheepdog who tried to make friends with a skunk. Oh, goodness. So they're stuck in the car with a dog that smells like skunk. Ugh. Parental frustration soon started to show. How could they get where they needed to go? They stewed and they steamed, their faces grew red, then all of their children convened up ahead. Since Meg lived by Barry, and Barry knew Pete, and Pete was Sue's neighbor on Sycamore Street, and Meg was an art club with Barry and Sue, they quickly decided, as friends, what to do. Oh, interesting. I wonder what will happen. Barry said, listen, let's all exchange cars. We'll borrow yours, and then you borrow ours. I'll switch with Pete and Meg swaps with Sue, and later we'll trade our cars back when we're through. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Everybody just hops in the car that's on the right side of the road. The parents agreed the solution was great. By borrowing cars, they'd no longer be late. And so they departed and went on their way to the pool or the dog wash, to Paul's or ballet. Good solution. And as for the big rig, that too was okay. A wrecker was summoned and towed it away to the far eastern field where later that night... Hmm. <gasps> Check it out. Check out what his load was. All was revealed to the people's delight. He was hauling a Ferris wheel. And look, there's a whole fair down there on the eastern field now. Wow. I'm glad the truck got unstuck. And that brings us to the end of the book itself. But there's an author's note here at the back that I'd like to read to you guys. A few years ago, says the author, I heard about an incident that happened on Vinylhaven, an island off the coast of Maine. During a large wind power construction project, a huge tractor trailer went off the road and blocked the local traffic. Given the size of the truck and the narrowness of the island's roads, such a mishap seemed almost likely. But it was the way the islanders resolved the problem that I found so remarkable. They did exactly what's described in the book. They swapped cars with their friends and completed their journeys. Some even made it home before their ice cream melted. Later, after the big rig had been cleared and the road was once again opened, all of the people involved returned the cars to their original owners. Apparently, this kind of sharing is common on the island. When I contacted a resident of Vinylhaven to ask if this story was true, she seemed surprised that I was planning to turn it into a book. She said, we all know each other, and so that's what we do. We leave our trucks unlocked with the keys inside in case someone needs to borrow one. Don't you wish everyone was that trusting? So even I, or even though I changed a couple of the details and added some new fictional characters, this is overall a true story. And I can't think of a better example of problem solving and cooperation than what took place that day on Vinylhaven off the coast of Maine. And so they even got that poor, or that poor truck driver unstuck and managed to get him to his destination too. And uh, there's a picture on the back here that shows what one of these trucks actually looks like. This is one of the big rigs used to transport the enormous wind turbine blades on Vinylhaven. Here it is leaving the waterfront on the island to make its way up to the construction site. And so this type of truck is called a semi-truck, or uh, usually they have 18 wheels, so they're called 18 wheelers as well. And this is actually almost exactly the type of truck that my dad drove back when he drove for a living. All right, and that, my friends, brings us to the end of our book. Thank you guys for joining me here on Elementary Read Aloud today, and we'll see you again sometime soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.